to start with Lynn Bragg, uh, who is a strategic consultant for Casey Family Programs. Casey Family Programs is a philanthropy that really focuses on how we collectively and through our state public policies and programs keep children safe. And we are all grateful to the help that they have provided, not only the country, but certainly Georgia in particular. And so, um, we'll start with Lynn Bragg. Thank you, Pat, for that very gracious um, introduction. But good morning, everyone. It really is an honor and a pleasure um, to join this support conversation that we all know is happening in the state of Georgia around your most vulnerable children and families. The Casey Family Programs, when we work with leaders in jurisdictions across the country, one of the questions that we often get are, what makes a strong performance system? What are the key elements that drive child welfare reform? Which states are doing it the best? Which jurisdictions can we learn from? And what does child reform look like? And so when we think about child welfare reform, what we know is that often the call for child welfare reform comes because of some crisis in the system. Either it's a leadership crisis, an unprecedented budget cuts that stress the system, or in those most tragic cases, a rash of child deaths that happen. That we hear this push for reform, that we need to reform the child welfare system. We are, what we also find when we think about child welfare reform is that there is this tendency to focus on one part of the system. That we zero in on one part of the system as a way to fix what we think are intractable problems in the system. And oftentimes that's the public child welfare agency. In the state of Georgia, it's defects. And if I could say anything today that I would want to communicate to folks is that the child welfare system is not just the public child welfare agency. It is everybody sitting in this room. It is me, it is you, it's defects, it's schools, it's law enforcement, child welfare advocates, courts, mental health providers, substance abuse providers, the private provider community. When we have children who are harmed in our community, when we have children who are abused and neglected, or even when we have those children who die, it is every single one of our responsibilities for that failure in the system. It's not just a public child welfare failure, it is a failure of all of us in this community, across the state and across the country, when we have children who are experiencing these intractable problems. The other piece is that as a tendency is this call for reform, that we often have a tendency to zero in on one strategy, one reform strategy that we think is going to fix that problem. And it may be firing the leadership at DFACS. It may be bringing on staff, uh, training folks, bringing in calling evidence-based program, bringing in national consultants to fix the problem that we think are happening within the system. But the problem with that is that it's too simplistic, that fixing the intractable problems of child welfare is very complex, that there is no single answer, no single bullet to reforming child welfare, that in and of itself and by themselves, it's not enough. Sound policy is not enough. Sound legislation is not enough. An evidence-based program, a practice is not enough. More staff is not enough. It's not the answer. These are all excellent reform strategies. Even public policy reform efforts like the four year waiver or privatization, these are all excellent reform strategies, but by themselves, they're not enough. And I would argue that there are some core infrastructure elements that, have, that are evident in strong performing systems. That when these infrastructure elements exist within the system, you see these reform strategies embedded in them, and you see the effectiveness that you want to see for children and families. The first infrastructure element that I would offer is that you have to have sound legislation and policy that is driven by an overall vision for child welfare. What are the outcomes that you want to achieve? So the big question for Georgia as you're thinking about reform is, what is the vision for child welfare? What is your collective vision for child welfare and for permanency, safety, and well-being of children? Then the second other piece, that's infrastructure element piece that's really important, is that you have to have strategic engagement, stakeholder buy-in at all levels and across the entire system. Because we know that no, if we believe that no entity is seemingly responsible for children's safety, permanency, well-being, we know that we cannot do this work alone. We have to have these strategic alliances. We have to have stakeholder engagement at what our overall vision for the entire system is. And are we tracking around the collective vision? And are we tracking towards the same outcomes? Or do we have multiple agendas? Because those are going to work against each other in any system reform effort. The third element that you have to have as part of a strong infrastructure is that you have to have a highly skilled 
competent, well-trained, well-supported child welfare workforce with manageable caseloads. You can bring in every, every good evidence-based practice or program that there is. You can bring, teach in, in legislative policy, but if your case workers do not have manageable caseloads, they will never implement them with effectiveness. You can also put your staff and every training that there is and sit them in a classroom, but if they don't have strong clinical support, if they're not motivated, again, you're never going to see those reform strategies that you're trying to implement across your system. You're never going to see any kind of good effectiveness with them. The fourth infrastructure element that's critically important is that you need to have a continuum of a robust array of services that exist within your communities and across your state. And that's those services need to exist on the continuum from early intervention to prevention services to in-home, community-based, to domestic violence, substance abuse, mental health, all the way to post-permanency and adoption services. You have to have that continuum of services that's diverse. But more importantly, that's appropriate to meet the needs of the children and families in your communities and across the state, as well as that they're accessible to your, to your families. So, and that's embedded good knowledge evidence-based resource for good knowledge and promising strategies that we know have been effective in other jurisdictions across the country. The fifth element that's tied to a robust service array is funding flexibility within your system. Funding that is tied to the outcomes that you want to achieve in your system. And so when you have that funding flexibility to purchase that array of services that also incentivize the outcomes that you want to see in your system, tie those pieces together and then you begin to have the elements of, this, of a strong system. Currently, as many of you know, $40 now only really fund foster care. We have see very little funding tracking along those front end services or those post permanency services that are so important for the families that we serve. Number six, the sixth infrastructure element, and I think that's the issue that's on the table today, is that you have to have a strong system of accountability. And that system of accountability needs to happen internally within each organization as well as externally across the system. And a system of accountability is comprised of a strong data management system with a quality assurance system. You need to make sure that we're not only collecting and tracking our progress, but that we're achieving the outcomes that we're getting. Compliance is not the same thing as being able to be a learning organization that builds and making sure that we are doing what we're doing well. I can check the box, but am I doing, and what I'm doing, is it achieving the outcomes that we want to see? And then finally, the seventh infrastructure element that I would argue is one of the most important, but I don't think we pay enough attention to, is the issue of nimble and consistent leadership. That's nimble and consistent leadership to drive reform. And when we talk about leadership, we're talking about leadership at all levels and across all branches. The executive branch, the legislative branch, the judicial branch. From the frontline worker all the way up to your CEO, of your private provider, to your child welfare commissioner. I think there is nothing that's more frustrating in the work that I do when we go into a jurisdiction and we get a, a leadership or administration that has a bold reform agenda. They come in, they implement that reform agenda, and then you see that leadership, that administration go 12 months, 16 months, 18 months two years. And then before you know it, we have a new administration, a new leadership that comes in, and then what do we do? We end up resetting the start button because they're not necessarily building on the strengths of the previous reform agenda, and we're starting right back where we were, but more importantly, our families are set back where we had them before. And so with those seven critical infrastructure elements, I think that those and the experience that I've had are critical to have. So as Georgia thinks about reform, Whatever reform that looks like, I think there are two important questions to ask. Collectively, as a state, what is our overall vision for child welfare in terms of children's permanency, safety, and well-being? Not only for the children that are sitting in foster care, but those children for all of Georgia's children. And then number two, do we have a strong foundation? Have we built and leveraged the foundation and an infrastructure that we need in order to support whatever reform strategy that we have? I thank you for your time and I look forward to the questions that we have later in the program.